You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Voted best of Pahrump for four years. Give them a call, 775-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New, service, and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Hello, happy Halloween. It is Tuesday, October 31st. I'm Elvira. I, I mean, Unette Gentry. Welcome to this edition of News 25. In our top story, a Las Vegas man recently threatens Jackie Rosen, leaving concerning voicemails containing anti-Semitism. RJ Camacho has this report. A man in Vegas was recently arrested after allegedly threatening Nevada Senator Jackie Rosen. According to reports, John Anthony Miller had allegedly left numerous threatening and anti-Semitic voicemails to the senator's office from October 11th to October 19th. During the voice messages, Miller had allegedly made references to Rosen's Jewish faith in the current Israel-Hamas war. The voicemails were allegedly filled with profanity. Some stated that Rosen was subhuman and vermin. Worst of all, one allegedly stated that at, we're gonna finish what Hitler started. According to quoted reports, which were filled with expletives, one of the voicemails even threatened to exterminate Jackie Rosen. Investigators with the Justice Department also stated that Miller was allegedly at Lloyd D. George Courthouse in Vegas in order to see the senator. However, he refused to cooperate with a court security officer and was not allowed in the courthouse. An unnamed spokesperson for Senator Rosen was quoted stating that threats against public officials should be taken seriously. Senator Rosen trusts the U.S. Attorney's Office and federal law enforcement to handle this matter. Miller was arrested on October 26th and was charged with threatening a federal official. He has been reported to appear in court for a preliminary hearing next month on November 13th. Vegas Stronger, a leading organization dedicated to addressing substance abuse and disorders and addressing homelessness, is proud to announce the launch of the Golden Ticket. Mikey Ruhan has these details. How long you been out here? Five months. Five months. Yes, sir. In my book, A Vegas Summer, that means that's five months too long. Yes, it is. It hurts me seeing people on the street struggling, begging for money, homeless. And often I feel compelled and I want to give them money to help them. But I know in my heart that giving money to somebody who has a substance use disorder or is mentally ill is not helping them. So today we're going to go out and we're going to hand out some golden tickets. That's a helpful way to help people. Vegas Stronger is proud to announce the launch of the Golden Ticket Campaign. This innovative initiative is designed to encourage responsible giving while offering individuals struggling with addiction an unprecedented opportunity to access addiction treatment, behavioral health care, case management, and a range of critical services. The Golden Ticket Program is set to make a transformative impact on the lives of those in need. The Golden Ticket is a campaign to educate the community as the best way to help those experiencing homelessness. It's for free food and shelter. Okay. If you walk into Vegas Stronger, which is right around the corner here, have you seen it? No. It's right on Main Street. Big graffiti building. Okay. It's got a picture of my dog on it. Um, but uh, it's a counseling center. And if you walk in, we will hook you up with a counselor. You do an assessment. We'll find out what you need. We'll get you food and then we'll get you plugged into shelter. Okay. Any interest? Yeah. The Golden Ticket connects each person to food and shelter and an array of wraparound services to solve their problems instead of enabling their unhealthy vagrancy choice. Please give a ticket to panhandlers instead of money or food. Although you may have wonderful intentions by giving food or money to someone experiencing homelessness, it dissuades them from accepting help from those who can get them off the streets, treatment for medical and mental health issues, and into housing. You can download the golden ticket at VegasStronger.org or stop by the Vegas Stronger office to pick some up at 916 North Main Street, Las Vegas, Nevada. Vegas Stronger is open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. The courtyard is open 24-7. For more information, you can email contact at vegasstronger.org or call 702-202-6647.
Two Pahrump residents are arrested by Nye County sheriffs after reportedly using different people's credit card information. On October 22nd, officers were dispatched to Tractor Supply Company in reference to a report of fraud. Upon arrival, officers made contact with Eric Ross and Rachel Johnson. According to the declaration of arrest, Eric told officers that he and Rachel were there to pick up a motorcycle they purchased online with a gift card that someone else had given to them. However, staff had stated that Rachel was allegedly attempting to purchase the motorcycle with multiple different credit cards that had different names on them. The next day, officers reviewed surveillance footage Footage that had showed Rachel and Eric in the store on October 10th, allegedly using another's information to purchase a large number of items. According to the police report, the total amount was approximately $3,416. Officers also reported that Rachel had allegedly used the person's identity to set up a neighbor's club loyalty account that both of them would allegedly use to make purchases with the fraudulent credit card and gift card. Officers then searched both Eric and Rachel's address after attaining a search warrant and allegedly found multiple pieces of mail for multiple victims throughout Southern Nevada inside. There was also allegedly the property that was fraudulently obtained from Tractor Supply, according to the arrest report. Finally, on October 29th, officers were dispatched in reference to a report of a suspicious vehicle inside the fence area of a person's residence that was not supposed to be there. Upon arrival, officers made contact with Eric Ross and arrested him due to the aforementioned law enforcement encounters. While searching Eric's person, officers allegedly found a clear crystal-like rock that later tested positive for methamphetamine. Both Eric Ross and Rachel Johnson were arrested and booked into the Nye County Detention Center under the charges of obtaining money or property under false pretenses, obtaining or use of another's ID, grand larceny of $1,200 but less than $5,000, conspiracy to commit criminal contempt, mail theft, and Eric Ross was charged additionally with possession of a scheduled one or two controlled substance. More roads are now being reopened in Death Valley following those devastating floods. After receiving funding from the Federal Highway Administration's Emergency Relief for Federally Owned Roads Program, Death Valley National Park will be reopening Mud Canyon Road and Daylight Pass on November 1st. However, only emergency repairs are completed and contractors only cleared rocks and gravel off the road, filled in shoulder drop-offs, removed damaged pavement, and filled in collapsed road segments with gravel. Drivers who use the road are advised to expect gravel patches on the paved roads, and to expect traffic delays due to the continuous construction occurring park-wide. The National Park Service has stated that a second contract will start in a few months in order to do permanent road repairs, which include repaving and selective armoring in order to protect roads from future floods. For additional information, you can visit mps.gov slash d-e-v-a. And don't change that channel. We'll be right back in your homes. Thank you for inviting me in. And if you don't, I get very angry and bite when I'm angry. News 25 will be right back. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back to News 25. Turning back now to local news, Inspiration's Senior Living holds their third annual Trunk or Treat, and News 25 was there to catch up with all the fun. Yeah, we're excited to be here uh, this evening for our third annual Trunk or Treat uh, here at Inspirations. It's something our senior uh, residents look forward to uh, every year. Um, and so we've done this three years in a row now. Um, and our residents really just love seeing all the kids in their costumes. And we get to mix the intergenerational, um, you know, fun. Uh, so the seniors and, and the kids both love it. And we have a lot of our community partners out here uh, with trunks. And then, of course, some of our staff, uh, some of our residents' family members. And so we have Assemblyman Hafen. Uh, it's just really a great, good, fun time. Kids that shred skate through in Dorch Memorial Park with an event that was nothing short of a blast. And of course, News 25 was right there rolling with them. 
The Kids That Shred event was an amazing day filled with fun laughs and amazing tricks from those on skateboards, BMX bikes, and scooters. We spoke to Kaylin Kalawaya, the director of marketing, to tell us all about it. We had um, BMX, scooter, and skateboarders that competed, which was really fun. It was two runs that they did, so they were able to get whatever tricks they wanted inside of their lines. Kaylin even participated in the event herself for the skateboarding competition. Um, it was fun. It was also tricky. So <laughs> I had fun with it, though. Um, hopefully we do have more events out here in Pahrump so we can get more of the population out here to come together. The event had a winner for three separate categories, for scooters, skateboarding, and BMX. First place for scooters was Kyle, who participated in all three events. First place for skateboarding was Yako, and first place for BMX was Jordan. However, I was curious about those prizes, so I just had to ask. It was our custom-made hydro flasks, um, some other bottles that we got donated to our profit, and um, merchandise of ours, so like t-shirts, stickers, cups, yeah. And for those interested in contacting Kids That Shred, kaylin has got the answers for that too. Um, we have our Instagram, Kids That Shred organization, and we also have our website, kidsthatshred.com. Kingston was absolutely killing it out there in the competition, and we got a chance to speak with King the Shredder himself, who placed second in the skateboarding competition. It was fun. I liked it. I love skateboarding because it's kind of difficult, so it's more of a challenge. Coincidentally enough, Kingston's favorite skateboarder is Yako, the first place winner for the skateboarding competition. The feelings apparently mutual as well, as Yako's favorite skateboarder is none other than Kingston. We met, I think, at a skate event, I believe, or it could have been at just casually at the skate park, uh, like a year or two ago. Being uh, uh, someone, you know, to, that he looks up to, it uh, helps me keep going, you know, gives me, gives me a little purpose. We asked Yako how he felt having won the skateboarding competition. Oh, it feels great. I, I'm grateful. I'm super grateful. I'm appreciative. Uh, I thank uh, the owner, Gary, uh, Kids That Shred organization, for bringing, making this happen. To be honest, I... Woke up not too long ago before I got here. Like, I woke up and then drove out all the way out here from my house in uh, Vegas. It's like an hour drive and uh, really was stiff. Really felt stiff, but it doesn't really take much for me to warm up. And, uh, you know, I was just going off of the, the crowd, you know, like the hype and stuff. And it, and it really helps a lot, you know. Like, uh, for me personally, is uh, when there's like a crowd, you know, like, and there's anticipation, it really helps me. Uh, it helps me focus and skate. He also said he's looking forward to the next event from Kids That Shred. Of course, what kind of event is it without music, a DJ, and a master of ceremonies? For this event, all three were proudly provided by electronic artist Gabe Smith. I had a blast. Uh, I had so much fun performing music and emceeing and, and getting the crowd hyped. Uh, I've been doing music all over the world for many, many years and doing a lot of skateboarding events. I've worked with a lot of major foundations getting skate parks built and doing all kinds of things like that and it, I felt right in my element and at home. I recently moved to Pahrump so this is the most at home I've felt so far being at a park and yelling at strangers. You know it, it makes me feel like we're making a big impact in the community and I'm really grateful to see this hitting Pahrump. Uh, I'm excited that there's going to be a lot more things for young people and their community is working towards that and I'm, I'm stoked to be part of it. The Clark County Public Arts Office is inviting everyone to join them during their live death festival going on this November 26th. The Clark County Public Art Office is thrilled to present the 22nd annual Life in Death Day of the Dead art exhibit in Las Vegas. The exhibition is currently on display through November 25th, but the Life in Death Festival will be on Wednesday and Thursday, November 1st and 2nd from 5 to 9 p.m. The reception for the art exhibit will be Thursday, November 2nd from 5 to 6.30 p.m. The Clark County Public Art Office 
would like you to enjoy the mediums being used in this exhibition and explore what the Clark County artists have to offer during this holiday. This exhibit features three different categories of artists. There is youth, amateur, and experienced. For those wanting to know more about this exhibit, you can contact the Clark County Public Art Office at ccpublicart at clarkcountynv.gov. Be very careful out there this All Hallows Eve. News 25 will be right back to check in on you. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by... Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back. Well, if you're like me and you plan to do any underground digging this Halloween night, perhaps to bury something, well, you should watch this video first. It's Bill Perna from Valley Electric Association who says that we must call VEA before we dig. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Valley Electric and its family of companies focused on serving our members. We're better together. Hello, we're here to talk today about 811 Call Before You Dig. So any type of major project that you're going to be doing at your home where you're going to be excavating, putting in poles or so forth, you want to make sure that you get proper line locates at your property before you begin your project. Uh, the first thing that you would do is either call 811, and that's as simple as just dialing 811, um, and you will get, op get a service representative, and then open up a ticket with that representative, and then a, uh, all of the facilities feeding your property will be located with lines and markers so that you know where to dig at. Uh, one of the other things that you can do is if you don't want to call in, you can also go to www call811.com and you can open up a ticket that way. If you have a question about a line locate that you've placed a ticket number for, you can also call into the office at 775-727-5312 and speak to a representative. You would do press one for electric and then ask for the billing department. You need to have your ticket number available that you got from 811 and they can verify uh, when the when that's going to take place or or escalate that and make sure that it's taken care of for you but again just proper safety uh, number one you don't want to cut into a live power line number two you don't want to damage a power line it's dangerous and it can also cost money to repair the service so again call 811 thank you well today is Halloween and of course Kids are keyed up for the Halloween fun, but before heading out trick-or-treating, there are a few things you must keep in mind. We always want to think about the traffic and, you know, what kids' costumes look like. Are they easily seen? Um, is there something reflective on them so that um, cars can see them if they're out after dark? Dr. Gina Robinson is a pediatrician with Cleveland Clinic Children's. She suggests trick-or-treating earlier in the day while it's still light outside. However, if you're out after dark, she says glow sticks are a great way to make your child's costume stand out. It's also important for an adult to supervise younger kids and make sure they're safe when walking from house to house. Dr. Robinson adds kids should wait for a parent to check their candy before eating it especially if they have food allergies. Once they get home, the parent can go through all their candy with them and make sure that it's safe for them. And if they are just too worried to send them out or their allergies are severe, maybe doing something at home, having a Halloween party, inviting a few friends over so that they can have a more controlled environment. And no matter what you decide to do, if there are too many treats left over at the end of the night, you can always share them with others. 
News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. This Halloween, looking through our weather cam, looks like looking through a crystal ball. Look at the dancing skeletons. We'll take a closer look at the forecast and what's expected this Halloween after the break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Ooh, it's a nightmare of a weather report on Halloween. Hi, it's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. All up and down the Ace Country radio network that appears before me is this by Ghostly Control and on to your uh, Facebook application worldwide. Nice app. 59 degrees out there in Fernley, Fallon, and Tonopah. Weather triplet separated by Carson City at 64. We've got Goldfield checking in at 61. Didn't want any of that mess out in Beatty at 71. 76 in Ambergosa makes them the hot spot in Las Vegas. Hit uh, temp at 69 degrees. It's all right. 84 out in Death Valley if you're really missing that heat. And it's just a little bit of heat here in the Paradise Front. Let's take a look at our current temperature. Well, I think it's about 78 degrees. Let's see. Mm, Karnak says 68 degrees. Oh, 72 just a little bit earlier. Not too bad. Winds out of the south at just three miles per hour. Sun rose this morning in all its glory, hope, and promise of a new day. And a fantastic Halloween at 7.05 a.m. Look for all the lights to extinguish as we head on into uh, the revel of the night. It's, it'll be 37 degrees as we head down to there. Tonight and uh, sunset at 548, not too bad. Uh, early enough to uh, in, still enjoy some a little bit of warmth as you're out there trick-or-treating. Be careful, kids, as you're going along. Uh, the rest of the week, look pretty fine. Look at this thing. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, clear skies mostly. Uh, it looks like we get a little bit of cloud cover Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but no real talk of rain. Temperatures steady, eddy in the middle uh, 70s, uh, up to 78 on Thursday and 75 kind of ish for the rest of the week. Lows at night around uh, 50, high 40s, not too bad. A uh, nice fall stretch of weather, and we should all enjoy that. But, uh, yeah, do watch for those kids out there trick-or-treating tonight. It's going to be a, a fun night. So I hope you're all safe. Back to the desk. Here's you, Net. Spooky good forecast, John, and I love that it's very chill after sundown. And if you're like me and are heading out after sundown only to take a bite out of all the action out there, be sure to watch the Halloween party and listen in to that Halloween party on Ace Country Radio. Tune in at 6 p.m. and if you're having too much fun out there trick-or-treating or Taking a bite out of other things, we'll re-air that on Ace Country Radio at 9 p.m. That's our Halloween party on Ace Country Radio. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the air next newscast. Good night.